this is 11.3 and we're looking at the most in-depth question you're going to get on the kidney. Explain how the structure of the nephron and the associated blood vessels enable the kidney to carry out all of its functions for eight marks. When we see explain, we always say what, why and how. So you always, always, always start with the definition. What is the function? It has two. Osmoregulation and nitrogen excretion. Now it's a mammalian kidney. It's a kidney found in mammals, small furry things, plus humans. And we excrete urea. How do we do it? Well, this blood vessel that I've just highlighted is the first part, and it's called the glomerulus. But if you want to say it so that you can spell it, say glomerulus, glomerulus, let me go. And it's part of ultra filtration. It has tiny holes in the capillary wall, which allow very small particles through under high pressure. If you're interested in ultrafiltration in more detail, I've done a separate video, but the pressure is created by a larger afferent vessel going in than the vessel coming out, which is called the efferent. It's just like if you squeezed a hose pipe, you would get backing up of water. And if you put little holes in that hose pipe, then molecules that are dissolved in the water are going to flow out. Time for a hint. So this is where I tell you extra content that is definitely going to help you in a multiple choice question. So the stuff I'm colouring in buff coloured now is all dissolved in the blood plasma and the stuff that I'm going to colour in red is the larger stuff that is not dissolved in the plasma but it's definitely present in the blood. So all of that stuff's going to be in the blood before the glomerulus and then the, the larger stuff will be in the blood after. So what you can see is, what I'm ticking is everything that's present in the blood before, what falls through the filtrate into the Bowman's capsule, and the fact that the large stuff is the only stuff present afterwards, straight after the glomerulus. So moving on, we have the proximal convoluted tubule. This is all about selective reabsorption. So the kidney has filtered everything that's dissolved in the plasma and now it needs to reabsorb the good stuff, the precious stuff. So the first thing it's reabsorbing is the glucose and the amino acids and it does that using protein pumps and energy. So we call that active transport. Now we're only dealing with the proximal convoluted tubule with the IB. There is a distal convoluted tubule in the distance. So that's the one that's further away, but we don't really deal with that. Um, convoluted means I could tell you a really long-winded story and go around the houses and you'd get, oh, so bored. Let's, let's put it in a nutshell. The glomerulus is for ultrafiltration and the proximal convoluted tubule for selective reabsorption. And what is it reabsorbing? It's reabsorbing glucose, amino acids through active transport and the filtrate continues What's in the filtrate? Water and salt. So the next step is the water has to be reabsorbed. And that's done by the sodium being actively pumped out within the loop of Henley. And it's pumped into an area called the medulla. So the medulla gets very salty, high solute concentration, or we could say hypertonic. And the limb of the loop of Henley that's going down, the descending limb, is leaky to water. So the water will move into the medulla through osmosis. So to recap, the loop of Henley is involved in osmoregulation. The descending loop is permeable to water and the ascending loop pumps sodium actively, creating a hypertonic medulla. This means that water will flow out of the nephron into the medulla by osmosis. So this area is involved in osmoregulation and so is one other area, the collecting duct. In the collecting duct, water will also move out depending on how much hormone 
is present in the body and how much water is present in the body. The hormone ADH, or antidiuretic hormone, acts on these things called aquaporins. Think Aquaman. So I'm going to draw a little Aquaman here for you. And at the bottom, I'm going to represent the water inside the Aquaman. And so when there's a little bit of water, when you're dehydrated, your hypothalamus produces loads of ADH. It gets stored in the pituitary gland and then it will be released into your blood. And it acts on these aquaporins. It will make them absorb more water back into the medulla. So if you're dehydrated, you will absorb more water back because of high ADH which actually means that your urine becomes more concentrated. Not good. Not good at all. It will be a dark colour. You should. It should be champagne coloured. That's nice. Nice and healthy. Don't drink it. This is an example of negative feedback. You've got loads of other examples in the course of negative feedback. That's a, that's a topic for another video. Woohoo, we're at the end. Let's check. Explain is say what, say why, say how. So have we said what is the function of the kidney and the nephron overall? Yes, we have. We said osmoregulation and nitrogen excretion. Did we say what does the ultrafiltration? Yes, we did. We said glomerulus. And we said how? Tiny little holes, high pressure, small molecules pass into the Bowman's capsule. Then we said about selective reabsorption at the proximal convoluted tubule and osmoregulation at the loop of Henle and at the collecting duct. So, Cadizi learners, did we nail it for you? Get in touch, learn at cadizi.com.